everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com. And in today's video, I'm going to unbox some new products I recently ordered from my local Rockwell distributor. And they are products for my Micro 800 course, Nano Basics. So I figured it'd be fun to unbox them and see what comes in the box when you order these products. So let me go ahead and move my uh, Micro 850 out of the way. And the first product we have here is a 2080 OF2. So that is an analog output plug-in module. And we'll go ahead and open that up. There we go. And let's see what comes in this box. Okay, we have the product in a static bag. We have the two screws that hold it into the uh, micro itself. We have this little uh, wiring diagram. Uh, let me hold it upside right. This uh, called wiring diagram. Let's see what the wiring diagram looks like here. A lot of warnings and cautions. Basically, this is what it looks like inside here. And you can, of course, get this at ab.com um, if you want a PDF version of that, which is usually what I do. Matter of fact, I'll just throw that back in the box. All right, so let's see if we can't open this. It's resealable. That's cool. But let's see if we can't uh, find the side that, you know what, I don't see the side that it pre-opened. <laughs> well, thank goodness for knives. Yeah, let's just cut that open. There we go. All right. And let's take a look here. I don't know why it needs to be resealable, but it might be easier for whoever's, or whatever is putting it in the, the bag. Okay, so let's take a look at that guy. I like the fact that they Try to put the pin out on the front of the unit as well. Okay. Got a CE label on one side. Let's see. Got another label on this side. Not much to it. It's like all the other plug-in modules. All right. So let's see if we can install that. Let's see here. I'll take that cover off. And put this guy in like so. All right. And then uh, we could screw it in if it was going in the field. But uh, this one is not. So we'll leave it unscrewed here. So let's take uh, all this good stuff and put it back in the box. And what else do we have here? This is an, a serial isolated port. An isolated serial port or serial isol. Let's go ahead and open that up. And I don't think I put the... Let me hold the box up in front of the camera so you can see the label there. Serial ISIL. So an isolated serial port. Good for doing uh, Modbus. Um, in the course, we're going to do Modbus to the PowerFlex line of drives. Um, let's see what we get in the box here. Again, uh, we get the screws. We get the wiring diagrams. Um, this is not a D-shell or a mini DIN. So... You want to be able to wire it up correctly. I'm going to be using it for 485, but uh, I believe you could also use it for 232. Let's take a look and see what the book says here. Yep. 232 and 485 supported. Let's see the CTS, RTS, DCD, etc. Excellent. And again, this is, uh, get this at ab.com as well. Let's see if we can get this guy open. I'm going to have to use a knife. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see where it's nicked anywhere. Not a problem. There we go. Okay. Get this open. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can take a look at this guy here. I don't know. Well, I guess I could decipher that. I guess everything that doesn't say 45 is 232, so not too bad. And if we wanted to plug that in, uh, put it right here. This one is the hardest one to get in because that leg right there seems to be the hardest one to get in on all of these models. Okay. Excellent. Okay, two new uh, IO modules to cover in my course. Um, 
Nano Basics. Uh, you can find it at uh, nano-basics.com or go to the automationschool.com and click on Nano Basics. Uh, very affordable. Um, uh, you can grab it right now at a great price. Uh, I do have to raise the price uh, because I'm adding a lot more lessons to it, more on par with my uh, RS Logics PLC Basics course. But uh, in any case, so we have that. And the other thing I wanted to do in the course is show people the add-on modules. That's something that you really only can do with the uh, with the uh, 850 today. You know, who knows if tomorrow um, they'll change that. So let me go ahead and take this uh, side cover off. And then we'll push that out of the way and take a look at what I what do I have here. This is, oh, don't see it on that side, a 2085 OWA. Let me uh, bring it closer here. So that's a relay output module. And uh, I thought that'd be good to have because I can drive anything with it. You know, if I would have got an AC output, I could only drive AC. So, um, you know, the bad thing with using... Um, Relays is that uh, there's a shorter life than a triac or a transistor, so that's the downside. The upside is they can typically carry either AC or DC. So let's see what comes in here. This is an installation instructions. And if we take a look, a lot of warnings and notices and you know stuff they have to put in there. Okay, talks about using surge suppressors if you have. Um, you know, any inductive loads. Uh, that's important. We'll put the surge suppressors on. Okay, and uh, here you can see the wiring diagram for both the OW8 and the OW16. Okay, so it's all pretty common sense. So let's get it out of the box here. Okay, and we get these as well. Okay. Okay, we'll throw those back in there. Along with the uh, manual. And you always want to take this uh, cover off the top of your PLCs before you power them on. Because they need that air flowing through them to cool them down. However, you never want to take them off before you get the thing installed. Because you don't want any filings or you know metal chips to fall into your PLC. You, you would not believe how many times I've seen people bring in defective PLCs and you just look like this and all kinds of stuff fall out of it. It's like, what were you thinking? You know, what were you thinking dropping all kinds of metal flakes into your PLC? And usually it's not the same guy who drilled as and wired as, as uh, was responsible for the PLC, but still, you know, um, communications is key to make sure things like that don't happen. So we'll just put that in there. Okay. And this guy's very thin, not much to him. Let's see if we can figure out how to put them on. It looks to me like, and I've never had one of these before, so, oh, but it looks to me like you just flop it on there. It's definitely not like the, uh, well, let's see. No, oh, that's just the lock. So it's not like the 1769. Let's go ahead and do it. Hmm. Yeah, that, um, show you how that went on. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's different. Really doesn't really doesn't feel like it snaps on. I mean, it just sits there. So let's go ahead and close this tab and see if it gets any better. Well, it's a little better. A little bit more sturdy with the tab on. Oh, there's one on the bottom too. Oh, that there we go. Now it's on there. Good. All right. Not a bad design, in my opinion. But now, what a lot of people forget to do is when they have one of these, oh, yeah, let me make sure this is right side up for the camera, is they don't buy an end cap. And you don't need an end cap for the Micro 1200, um, Micrologix 1200. And um, you don't need an end cap for like the L16 or Point IL, but you, or Flex IO, but you do need an end cap for 1769, and you do need an end cap for um the 2085 aisle now um the end caps is super super inexpensive I'm, it's probably just a, a terminating resistor i'd imagine but let's take a look at that so here's the box i think list price is 15 bucks i mean it's, it's a very inexpensive thing um 
be nice if they were to include it, like the L2 series to Compact Logics, they include the end cap with it. But uh, I guess they're just trying to drive price out of everything, so. And maybe the amount of people who actually need these isn't that much, so why throw in $15 into the cost of the $850 when you don't have to? But in any case, we'll go ahead and open her up. Okay. Yeah, I didn't cut myself today. That's good. <laughs> oh, and look at that. Look at how that opens. Okay. Interesting. It's always cool opening up new products. And if you work at Rock, well, if you want to send me a new products, I love opening them up and showing people. So feel free to send them over. Um, in any case, uh, we'll take a look at this guy. Now, this, this is, this is, to me, is strange. Because it's not... Wow. So there it is. $15.50 list price, I think. Um, if you want to know the price, check out Proposal Works. It has all the pricing in it. And to put this on, now let's go this way. Oh, I got the, the camera's backwards for some reason, so excuse, excuse my confusion as I'm trying to look at the TV here and see things. Um, and everything's backwards. So I'm just going to plop it on like the other one. Okay. Close it. Yeah, that's on there really good. Kind of looks odd, huh? Has like these, well, let me show the camera here. Has these like two eyes on it. Isn't that weird? But it's on there. It works. It's not coming off. Um, you know, they test everything for vibration and all that's published. So I'm assuming this is a pretty good, oh, look at this. I just noticed that now. Green dot or something. Maybe that was QA. <laughs> Um, in any case, well, that's it. So those are four new parts, unboxing of an OF2, uh, serial ISOL, or isolated serial port, um, plug-in, those are both plugins. The, um, OW8-2085, uh, expansion I module, and the end cap for the 2085. And that's it for this unboxing video. Now, if you thought that was helpful, please give me a like and a sub. And if you'd like to learn everything you need to know about the Micro 800, including the Micro 810, 820, 830, and 850, then check out my course, Nano Basics, over at theautomationschool.com. And if you'd like to see me produce more free videos and more free blogs, then consider supporting my channel and my blog over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And with that, that's the end of this video. Until next time, peace.